And so far, what has been your favorite show of the tour? Man, there's been so many. I, you know, I gotta say, like, Detroit was incredible, as always. You know, we shot our DVD there. San Antonio was amazing. Um, I really felt like all the Canada shows, because we hadn't been there in so long, just had, like, this extra intense energy. Um, Orlando was really good. I mean, there's, there's so many. I mean, even... You know, when we kicked off the tour, out of the gate, some shows that I thought were going to be small and, and uh, you know, not exactly the most lively crowd, like Charlotte and uh, Tampa, ended up being, you know, great, like great turnouts for us, you know, and just you know, really enthusiastic. So that's, that's, that feels good, especially after doing the, for the, you know, the decimation of the nation part one with Camara, that went over really good. Yeah. That, every show was great. Like we did Mokina, you know, which is not too far from here. And that was incredible. So it's, I'm really surprised with everything that's going on. Well, that's good. Um, as you brought up like being blessed and you like case point, you're having cannibal courts open for you now and everything. One of the great things about the band is that you guys have been, able to cross over so many different heavy heavy genres. Like you start off as a hardcore band, then you were doing like the Oscars thing and one over like fans who were I remember reading an interview where you were talking about fans who came in like mesh undershirts for Cold Chamber and you won over all these people, P O D fans were there, they were like watching you guys and everything. And even with that you're getting kids now who know you from Headbangers Ball, who are getting or sometimes just want something heavy and lyrically something they can relate to. What would you say has been the key to such a crossover appeal for you guys? I just think being, you know, champions of the music and trying to promote unity, you know, and because uh, all aggressive music to me, it's like all, you know, the same thing. It's just somehow along the line, people I think felt more, um, you know, I guess they felt more of a community vibe with certain sub genres, and I know that because going to shows in both Boston and New York and Connecticut, it was different in each city, kind of like who could play with who, who, what kind of scenes were more, you know, in tune with different styles of music. I mean, even, and especially Albany too, where we got a, our, a lot of our, you know, we cultivated our sound, a lot of it in Albany. It was always a very much of a crossover scene. So, you know, one night we would play with Strife, and then the next night we would play with Six Feet Under and Internal Bleeding, and then the next night we would play with Insult and the Voorhees, and you know, then the night after that we would be playing, you know, with Life of Agony, so or Typo Negative. So yeah. there was always this, you know, the ambition to try to gain those bands' fans and make people you know, feel like it didn't matter if your hair was long, it didn't matter. If you were a Hari Krishna or you're into Buddha or you're into whatever. I mean, we play with Hari Krishna bands. We play with, you know, straight edge bands. I mean, we really wanted to just branch out and not alienate anybody. Um, and yeah, now that's what we just try to stay on that path, you know. People show up to these shows. It's great because when we play, like, the whole the whole front row is wearing Cannibal Corp shirts, you know. So it's like, that's great. You know, they stuck around for us, they're going crazy, and it shows that the, you know, the tour works and the crossover works and unity is real. Okay. Um, this is going to be a, a interesting, and this, is, and this is actually a compliment. Well, another great thing about the band a lot is the message of your lyrics. A lot of it being uh, basically never giving up, stand up for your beliefs, and just fight for what you do believe in, and just stay firm with these things. In a way, with that being said, you're kind of one of the most American bands in a sense that you're capable of inspiring hope in the youth and sticking to what you believe in. Would you say that's a fair assessment of the band and us well in your in your place in music today? You know, when you when you start touring the whole world, you start seeing things from a different you know standpoint, and a lot of people you know associate hate for you. You know, I think with this kind of uh, later wave of American, you know, metal or crossover music. Yeah. Even though we were, bef you know, before bands like Lamb of God and and um, you know a lot of the bands that were kind of tagged in that new wave of American heavy metal, um, somehow we've gotten crossover with those scenes and it's helped us. And I think when any band blows up, it helps the smaller bands, you know, because it's it's kind of like a trickle down effect. 
but going back to like what I was saying about not alienating people I've always wanted the lyrics to kind of speak to a broader audience and that's why we never involved you know politics or never involved you know personal you know, views of like world situations in songs because you go to different places and it's absolutely different and you want to give you know people just a little bit more than entertainment. Like, we've been to Greece, we've been to Japan, we've been to, you know, all over Eastern Europe, and even in non-English speaking countries, they know the lyrics, they know what they mean, and, and they appreciate them, so we kind of just, I mean, even though there are songs, I think, like, you know, like, We Still Fight, and, and uh, you know, even, like, Hollow Ground, that are, like, kind of, like, real, just, like, American sounding type of songs like even No Halos for the Heartless a lot of people think that that's you know kind of like a patriotic type of song yeah. um, it can speak to anybody it's all how you you know interpret it okay that's fair um, <clears throat> with the band you've been nominated for a Grammy you've toured the world as you just brought up and with bands like Slayer and Judas Priest, you've played Oscars three times on both stages six times six times yeah. wow I'm sorry yes. <laughs> sorry I believe it was the sixth time. Yes. I remember seeing you guys, like, I think the second time you played Oz Fest. 01, 02, 04. Yeah. 06, 07, and then, I'm sorry, the sixth I played Oz Fest with the Melody Kings. Okay, yeah, because I'm like, I remember, I think, the second time you guys played was, um, I think you were co-headlining with Slipknot, maybe. Yeah, that yeah. was 04. I remember that show. <laughs> I remember seeing yeah. you guys here. It was impressive. Um, so, yeah, you guys, well, you played Oz Fest several times then. And in just recently, you were one of the first hardcore band. You are the first hardcore band to sell a million albums all together. I just yeah. heard recently. Um, so with that being said, like, what's the one thing you have yet to do with Hate, Hate Breed, and what would you like to see happen? And in a way, what was the moment that you realized that you've made it as a musician? You know, I think we all kind of took a step back in the O to when we did Oz, just when we co-headlined the second stage with Down. we've arrived, you know what I mean, the record charted higher than, you know, any records that we ever, like, you know, bought, it was, like, ridiculous, and from 2002 onward, our lives completely changed, you know, oh, man, I think, with the first record, when it exploded in, you know, 97, 98, it was just a hardcore thing, and then when we toured with Sepultura, Soul Flight, Tomb, Danzig, Motorhead, like all, you know, touring on that record for three and a half years, four years, that record went on to be, you know, a crossover record, like just into all these different scenes, I mean, we even played with like Dropkick Murphys and bands like that, and it, it really branched out, we did more Warped Tour, but 2002, when Perseverance came out in March, that summer was just like, unbelievable, playing Ozfest, playing the off-day shows, um, it was just absolutely incredible. 